Good morning. Welcome to worship for Sunday morning, January 10th, 2021. We gather here together as Northminster United Church for this time of worship. We light our Christ candle at the beginning of every worship service, symbolizing that Christ is at the heart of our sharing God's love with neighbors near and far. We also give thanks that we do all of this on Treaty 7 land. Let us seek to simplify this moment, to slow down for a time, to worship, leaning on prayer and song and reflection and sharing with one another. Let's pray. Holy and awesome God, You who created everything in a spectacular show of of water and light and matter. Open us this day to the wonder of your power so that we might know the everlasting strength of your reign. We praise you for your mighty works on earth as in heaven, holding our lives in the fabric of the cosmos. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
strength and peace is the prayer of the psalm this week. The psalmist says, let me count the ways that we can know the strength of the Holy One. With awe and wonder, we behold the presence of God in all the elements of creation. Water, fire, air, and earth. And it is this glory that assures us that God indeed is holding our lives. Lift up your eyes, behold the hills, from where we'll help and rescue come. We call on one who made the earth, who blessed the stars, the moon and sun. God is holding holding your life God is holding your life we believe God is holding your life yes God is holding your life oh, God is holding your life we And so John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the whole Judean countryside and all in Jerusalem went out to him. And confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the river Jordan. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt tied around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I. The thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and he was baptized by John in the Jordan. As he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart, and the Spirit of God descend on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, who I love, and you I am well pleased. Listen to these words from Psalm 29. Give glory to Adonai, you heavenly court. Give Adonai glory and strength. Give forth the glory that God's name deserves and worship Adonai in the splendor of holiness. The voice of Adonai resounds over the waters. The God of glory thunders over the raging seas. God's voice is powerful. God's voice is full of majesty. The voice of Adonai snaps the cedars, shatters the cedars of Lebanon. It makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of Adonai strikes with bolts of lightning. The voice of Yahweh shakes the wilderness the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of God twists the oaks and strips the forests bare. And in God's temple, all cry, glory. Adonai sits in judgment over the flood. Adonai is its ruler forever. Give strength to your people, Adonai. 
Bless your people with peace. This psalm, Psalm 29, which Claire read for us, is the lectionary, which is our three-year cycle of scriptures that we rotate through, years A, B, and C. This psalm is the lectionary's choice for the baptism of Jesus Sunday, not just for one of the three years, but it's for all three years of the lectionary cycle. And, and that's with good reason, I think. There's this lovely theme or image of God's voice in this psalm, of God's voice echoing over the waters. And, and that's common to Psalm 29. And it's also common in the gospel story of Jesus' baptism, of God's voice echoing over the waters when they hear God say, you are my son, the beloved. The creation emphasis as well on this psalm it's also this very natural um, move um, into this idea of, of creation being about redemption and renewal and new beginnings and fresh starts. So how appropriate for us to hear that in the gospel and in our psalm as we start out a new year together. The thunderstorm as well, something else we hear in this text so graphically is pictured in this psalm was likely the most relatable demonstration of God's glory and God's strength in Israel's experience of nature. Since Israel had no exposure to volcanoes or, or hurricanes or tsunamis, that thunderstorm would have been a very um, relatable, natural, impressive event for the people, um, for the Israelites in their lives. So the writer of the, of the psalm uses the experience of a thunderstorm to move God's people to describe the glory and the strength of their God, of the covenant between them and God. And as you know, where we live here in southern Alberta, we can certainly relate to the power of a summer thunderstorm here. We can certainly relate to that imagery. <laughs> I want to suggest, and it's a little bit unusual, but I want to suggest um, a way that it might be helpful for you when you're reading the Psalms. Um, years ago, I came across this book that was suggested, it was a book for preachers and writing sermons um, of how one might organize or structure their sermon in a way that sort of created a story, a narrative plot. And this book suggested five exclamations to summarize that plot. Oops, ugh, aha, we, and yes. Those five things. <laughs> so, for example, the oops, the oops is the introduction or, or the trouble or what it is in life that's off balance. Sort of the way the oops is the highlight of the problem. Then there's the ug. The ug is the, the deepening of the problem, the trouble, where, where it's, we explore how life gets messier and messier. Then there's that aha in the sermon or in the story. The aha is sort of that turning point moment where there's an introduction of suddenly grace into the trouble. That place where if we're recognizing or connecting a gospel or the good news of the story, where sort of grace then breaks through into whatever human struggle was being um, shared or talked about. After the aha, is then the we in which we get to celebrate God's grace, where we get to experience how life is different because of God's grace, no matter what the trouble was. And then as a result of that grace, how life is changed, when we get to know that good news, there's that whole idea, that whole fifth point of saying, yes, that we get to have that sense of, that sense of satisfaction at the end of the story. 
Now, I don't think this is just great for sermons. I think this is a great way for anyone who might be one who likes to journal or maybe you um, struggle with journaling or you struggle with prayer and sometimes it's helpful to have a structure. So these five things, and if you didn't write them down, you can write them down now or go back and look at this again later, but five really helpful things if you want to journal or prayer about something, pray about something specific. The, the oops, whatever the issue or concern or hurt or struggle is, and the ug as you deepen um, your exploration of what it is, what it is that's getting messier and messier, and the aha of where that turning point might be or what it might be that brings relief. And the we, as you celebrate that grace, and the yes, as you get to carry on with that um, good news. Maybe it's a way of that yes is a praise to God, a giving thanks to God for this experience. So five great points, whether it's for a sermon or how you look at the Psalms or for journaling or prayer. Five, five great ways. So the last... The last couple of verses um, in this psalm that uh, Claire read for us today are wonderful examples of the yes part of the story, where we've seen the we, like the, the exclamation of, of God coming, um, like even in the last month or so, we've celebrated Christmas, right? We've said we, we've celebrated the grace of, of God coming in human form, um, we also, in our, in our Christian faith, celebrate death after res- um, resurrection after death. And in this psalm, the words they cry are glory, glory after the storm. Now that all of this has been accomplished, our psalmist says, here's how things are different in our lives and in our world. So that yes moment. Also, as that psalm reminds us, Verse 10, if you're going to look up um, verse 10 of Psalm 29, it's about the flood of chaos that threatens to overwhelm the world. That's what this psalm was about, those experiences of what was overwhelming, what was chaotic. And certainly we've experienced all sorts of chaos in this last year in our lives. We've known it firsthand. And we've seen images, even pure chaos in the news this week um, in, our, in the capital of our neighbors to the south. So we know the storms of life. And still God reigns and God endures and God persists. Second, if we're looking at this psalm, the reign or the persistence of God, as they say, is not temporary. Other kings may come and go, but after witnessing the birth of of God in Christ, we can count on this, that God is forever. And what a comforting message that is in a time of turmoil. Third, this eternal and persistent God gives strength to the people, the psalm says. There will still be chaos, but God will give strength to survive in the midst of the storm. And lastly, I like that this psalm assures us that God blesses the people with peace. Peace which is not just peace of mind or the end of warfare among people, but that complete, full, whole restoration of all things, that all will be right and harmonious and balanced and healed, that everything shall be well. From the waters of creation to Noah and the flood, the crossing of the Red Sea, these descriptions of water in our Psalms, to the storms of Jesus calming the water and storms in Paul's shipwreck. The Bible has so much to say about these awe-filled wonders that ancient people saw in nature. Waters waters of life, of faith, can be stormy times, and yet God is always there. A question for you, a water question. How often do you think about your baptism? How often do you think about it? Some of you, a lot of us, would have been baptized at an age too small to remember, But perhaps your family remind you of its importance or you come across your baptismal certificate or candle 
or maybe your baptism is something you learn to appreciate uh, later in life. Um, maybe you were baptized at confirmation um, when you affirmed or confirmed your, your faith vows. Um, maybe you did it as an adult. Maybe you think about your baptism when you witness a baptism at church. Or maybe, truth be told, you just don't think of it that often. You're probably not alone. What significance might baptism hold for our daily lives? Perhaps to some it's quite meaningful. It's a fresh start, a very significant new beginning for a lot of people. But for a lot of us as well, I don't know if we think about our baptisms all that much. It was certainly a ritual that was important to our parents, our families, our, our faith community, important to us at the time, or it would not have happened. But day in and day out, I wonder. Today we are remembering Jesus' own baptism. And it's an opportunity, an invitation for us to think much more deeply and claim more fully the promises that God made to us at our own baptism. I'm asking you to think about this because I believe our baptisms play or need to play an essential role in getting us through all these chaos and storms that we are facing. Maybe you've heard this story that whenever Martin Luther found himself ready to give up, whenever worry for his own life or the life of the church he loved overwhelmed him, whenever the issues of his world were causing him stress and grief, it is said that Martin Luther would touch his forehead and say to himself, Remember, Martin, you have been baptized. That reminder that we are not alone, that we are held by God, cared for, fortified, embraced, that we are held by God, that God is holding our lives, that God is indeed holding our lives. The baptism of John, it was one of repentance, that desire to leave an old world behind and create a new one. And the baptism of Jesus, is, it's a baptism in the spirit of assuring us that we don't have to build a world by ourselves, that God is holding our lives through all our storms. And by Jesus' baptism and our own, we are offered something, something so much greater and so much more than the world could ever give us. Jesus, when he came to, to be the difference and save their world, Jesus could have incited violence against Rome. He could have amassed an army. Instead, he did something very different. He he committed to meeting people where they were. He committed with grace, to meeting them with grace. Jesus' baptism represents a different and a new way in the face of violence and power and worldly chaos. And so taking that moment and just remembering our baptisms like Martin Luther did. Martin, remember you have been baptized. So just doing that, remembering our baptisms, keeping our hearts and our minds on that new way, that assurance, giving us and our whole world hope for something different, something so much better that we couldn't even imagine possible. The God who called forth life in all its many and varied and diverse and beautiful forms of creation is the same God who in Psalm 29 was praised for a constant presence through the storms. Is also the same God who calls us to new birth in the waters of baptism. And in those waters, 
always and forever. God names us beloved. May God give you strength and joy on your journey. Let's sing. From failing embers, build a blazing fire. So strong enough to overturn injustice. Seek a world more gracious. Come touch and bless our hearts. Come touch our souls that we may know and love you. Your quiet presence, all our fears. and bless our souls. Come touch our minds and teach us how to reason. Free all our thoughts to wonder and to dream. Help us to open doors of understanding, to welcome truth and wisdom. Come touch and bless our minds. and bless our wills. Let's move now into our time of prayer. I invite you to share the prayers, uh, whatever it might be that are on your hearts and minds today to please type them into the comment section on Facebook so we can lift them together. And as we continue in our prayer time, I'm going to invite you now to sing this response. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We Let's pray. Eternal God, you are the maker of us all, and we are your creation. <coughs> Pardon me. People formed in your image as individuals, as community, formed and fed and furnished with understanding of who you are and of who and whose we are. We worship you today in recognition of your calling, of your communicating, of your caring to us to share in your creative and healing work. We are here, God, because we have heard you speak to us and in us and through others. Help us, dear Lord, to ever respond to you and your invitation to your grace. God is holding your life, God is holding your life, God is holding your life, we believe. God is holding your life, God is holding your life, God is holding your life, we believe. 
God of all our moments, of our days and nights. You speak and you act in the world around us, not only to call all your people to you, but also to direct and guide us in the way of healing and wholeness. Awaken us, God, to hear what you would say to us. Help us to open our ears, our eyes, our hearts to your presence. Help us to know when it is your voice we are hearing and when it is our prejudices and our desires to which we are paying heed. God, we pray that your church may rise up with renewed commitment in answer to your call, that your people may be instruments of your grace and love. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. who consider themselves inadequate and people who dismiss or avoid your calling in their lives. God, give them a new vision, a vision in which you are their strength and their hope, in which they know they're valued. We pray for those who, in answering your call, must leave the known for the unknown, the oasis for the desert, the comfortable for the uncertain, grant them courage and steadfast faith. Loving God who calls us beloved, bless us all with an abundant faith, a fruitful ministry, a joyful life. Bless us and all those who gather to work and continue the work and ministry of Jesus. God is holding your life, God is holding your life, God is holding your life, we believe. God is holding your life, God is holding your life, God is holding your life, we In our prayers this morning, we have a, a prayer request from Marcy, uh, prayers for peace and calm and healing for the people of the United States. A continuation of that prayer from Ernie, prayers for peace and unity for our neighbors in the U.S. A prayer from Marcy for those families who continue to lose their loved ones due to COVID-19. A prayer from Lynn Please say a small prayer for all the feral cats and dogs without a home in Egypt where they're living. And from Margaret, prayers for all of the teachers and school assistants as they prepare to welcome our children back to the classroom. And a prayer from Julie for Lynn and Hans as they are settled in Egypt. Let's continue to share in prayer to gather prayers and lift them to God, and to join together in saying the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we move into our time for offering now. 
thank you uh, on behalf of Northminster for the very many ways you continue to share and express your, your faith in the ways you share your time and your prayers and your talents and your financial gifts, the ways that you have continued to make an effort to get your offerings to church through PAR or Tithely or donations at the church. We thank you. There are still a few people that haven't picked up offering envelopes for 2021. You could make arrangements through the office to pick those up or also call the office for assistance with moving to PAR and Tithely if that's easier given that you can't always get to church. But thank you. Let's bless the many ways we give and pray. Let's pray. Loving God, we come to you in all our many colors, bringing our grief and our joy, our chaotic selves, our creativity and our talents. And we come made as we are, the way that you have made us, with all that we have to offer. We come bringing our entire being, knowing that in us, you are well pleased. Bless the ways we share of ourselves. Amen. And moving now into our announcements to end our time of worship here together. You are likely all getting the Friday email. Please do take time to read the many things in that important email of what is happening around and in and on behalf of Northminster. A few things I'd like to highlight. One is our star gifts. It is a tradition during Epiphany that um, we are each given a word, a star gift, to guide our journey through 2021. A word that we might reflect on, look up as definition, try to understand and see how it guides the year for us. If you haven't got your word yet, and lots of you have been asking, which is wonderful, please do message me, um, email me, phone me, um, come to coffee on Zoom after church, and I'll give you your word for 2021. And that's for all ages, young and old. So please ask for your word. It's a tradition of many Calgary United Churches to participate in something called Twelfth Night. Um, it hasn't been a part of our Northminster tradition for a few years, but this year we are sharing again, where many churches come together and share, their choirs each share a favorite anthem or hymn from the Christmas season. And that's happening tonight on Facebook. And you'll see the details here, or it's also in your Friday email, the link. Um, I believe you can watch it on Simons Valley's Facebook page. And um, just like you watch it on our Northminster page, go to Simons Valley United and watch it, and you'll see a contribution from Northminster as part of this evening's beautiful music. And that's, again, tonight at 7. Our men's group is having a gathering on Thursday night, so you're being invited to ask for the Zoom link for 7 p.m. and to find a beverage of choice and gather together for conversation on Zoom. And coming up on the 19th is our fraud prevention seminar hosted by Caria and the City of Calgary. And we look forward to um, learning and hearing about ways we can um, care for ourselves and learn about so we don't, um, we don't face um, the, the fraud and everything that's happening when we're so often confronted with. So, so be prepared and learn more about what is being offered at that seminar. Everything else, like I said, please take time to read them in your weekly email. Let's move now into our blessing. Go now in the knowledge that God is holding your life, even as we hold each other. You are not alone. You are loved. Amen. Let's end our time with the passing of the peace to make a gesture of like God is holding our lives. Let us cup our hands toward others who we may be worshiping with this morning as a sign of Christ's peace for all. Or if we are alone this morning, um, that you take your cupped hands and place it over your heart as a sign that um, you send your heartfelt peace out to the world. Thank you so much for being here this morning. I miss being together in person, but I'm, I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Let's sing, and I'll see, I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Yeah.
and sky. I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in deepest sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I say? Oh